that. Come up. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Let us start case nine. We're two cases away from ending. It was indeed a most bizarre incident born of a curious advertisement and a commonplace killing at the edge of town. Holmes. Pipe in hand, Sholmes looked down at the thick rolling fog outside our window. I wonder what exactly... How many mysteries are out there hidden within this bed of fog, he said. Redheads? Indeed, a most bizarre incident born of a curious advertisement. Hellhound's mad gallop through the shadows of a serial murder and executed man's graveyard resurrection instead of night. And a commonplace killing in a small forgotten room at the edge of the town. There is, naturally, always another side to every case of which most remain ignorant. And it is that other side which compels me to the scene of the crime, Wilson. Watson. So quickly now, take your hat and let's be on our way, my dear fellow. For our adventure is not over yet. Come, the game is afoot. Delivery, did someone order a toasted jelly sandwich with triple extra mayo? <laughs> no. Why would you get triple extra mayo? Gross. Also, hey Alex, how you doing? Long time no see. Thanks for joining. Hope you've been well. Eight days after that earth-shattering trial and Kazuma regaining his memory. We were in the foyer of one of London's most luxurious hotels, the Great Waterloo Hotel. First of November. Oh wait, I think my camera's a little high. I don't know why it is when I changed nothing, but I will... There we go. Go! One, one. Okay. Oops. Mm. How's been? It's been good. Uh, my family was over from Boston. So I was super busy uh, hanging out with them. And now they finally went back home, so I'm super tired. Rule number two of technology. If you change nothing, everything will break. If you change one thing, everything will break. Yeah, it's just like, everything should have been perfect. I could have just like... I should have just been able to like hit, like start streaming and go, but even my mic was having problems. And I was like, I touched nothing. Why are you not picking up as much? I don't know. It was weird. I think I have to lower it. Uh, okay, I think that'll be fine. <sighs> it's not a stream without audio issues. It's not a stream without any issues, honestly. Professor Mikotoba is due to arrive at any more. I read that already. Yes, I'm so glad we got here in time. The song hasn't been the same since what happens. Not that I'm surprised. The truth about Kazuma-sama's father. Do you suppose my father knew? That he was actually the mass murderer, the professor, you mean? Okay, I think... I think that, um... Kazuma's dad was set up. He's not the actual killer. I think someone framed him because they're like, Oh, a foreigner! Let's have them take the fall for whatever crime I'm committing. I knew that's what she was thinking about. There's a good chance, I'd say. I mean, they did come here to London together 16 years ago, didn't they? Yes, that's true. Come to think of it, didn't you say that Professor Mikotoba knew about Kazuma going missing in Hong Kong as well? That's right. For some reason, he wasn't at liberty to talk to me about it. That probably means he knows, then, about Kazuma showing up here in London with Amnesia and that he's regained his memory now. Abaka Gaijin, we can blame them. Easy. Exactly. Blame the foreigner. Ah, there she is. Whoa! Oh, father! Who's the other dude? Hello, Susato. How are you? Very well, thank you. Delighted you've arrived safe and sound. 
Hello, Mr. Naruhodo. Very kind of you to take the trouble to meet us here. Oh no, not at all. It's my pleasure. Heard all about your extraordinary exploits here in London, you know. This news has crossed the sea. It has? I always look forward to reading the monthly reports that arrive with the steamships from Britain. Oh, I see. Well, thank you very much. Who is this man? And why do I feel as though I've seen him before? Hmm? Take it from your expression that you can't quite place me. In that case, how about a little reminder, Seishiro? Firm tap should do it. Yes. A firm tap? What? A butt tap. Here we go, then. He's the judge. I hereby pronounce the defendant Yudosuke Naruhodo. Guilty. Ah. Oh! You're... It was difficult to recognize him without his hat on. The court will now hear the trial of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Your... Your Excellency! Hello, Judge Jigoku. Jigoku, how are you? It's been a long time. Ha 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 ha! Good, you remember now. That really did the trick. Guilty! Ha ha ha! Uh, uh. I, mean, I was declared not guilty, wasn't I? And there was no laughing at the time. So, London again after all this time. Hard to believe it's been ten years. To be honest, I never thought I'd be back. Neither did I. I didn't imagine Japan would ever be invited to an international symposium like this. Though really, I doubt anyone did, to be honest. It's all thanks to you, isn't it, Shesudo? What are you talking about, Eugene? Ah, 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 ah. Of course, Judge Jigoku. He must complete the set. He's the other man who, 16 years ago, came to London with Kazuma's father and Professor Mikotoba. Could this guy be the actual killer? His name does mean L. Jigoku. Well, all those passport checks and luggage searches at the border took rather a lot of time. I must say, I'm very envious of your ministerial status. You didn't have to go through any of that, did you? Ah, I knew you were jealous. Ah, 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 ah. Sorry? Ministerial status? Yes, didn't you know? Seishiro here is also Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. It was his personal insistence that allowed you to take Kazuma's place here on the study tour. Guilty as charged! Ha, 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 ha. Oh, well, thank you very much. He's really every bit as important as he looks. Ah, yes, now, Naruhodo. I received a telegram from Lord Strongheart yesterday. Oh, you did? It appears that some things came to light in a trial you were involved with eight days ago. About what happened ten years ago. That tragedy. Yes, could you tell us any more about it? First, your journey from Japan. So, how's the voyage here? Well, 50 days at sea is a long time by anyone's standards. But it wasn't as bad as when we first came 16 years ago. No, that's true. Then I truly wondered if we wouldn't be drifting in the vast ocean for the rest of our lives. This time, we followed the same route as you, so we were able to relax and enjoy the experience. Huh. Stopped in France's beautiful capital, Paris? We did, yes, though only for one night. And yesterday evening, we left the port of Dunkirk for Dover. Just in time for the symposium, in fact. It starts tomorrow. It's wonderful that you were invited to attend such an important international event. I'm very proud of you, Father. It's thanks to Seishiro here. Sixteen years ago, he managed to ingratiate himself with Britain's Attorney General. I'm sure that's why he was invited. And I suppose you could say I'm something of an appendage by default. Speak for yourself, Yujin. You are close friends with the professor of forensic science at a major hospital. Yes, well, I'd rather not dredge all that up, really. No, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then, but it doesn't bring him back. That's must father, I suppose. His father. The professor, the killer who took the lives of five members of the British aristocracy, was actually Kazuma's father, wasn't he? That's correct. Genshin Aosugi. <laughs> Genshin Impact! Genshin. 
He knew, I presume, father? Yes, he was a close friend at the time. Genshin came to Britain as a police detective, was studying investigative techniques at Scotland Yard. I've never understood what drove the man to commit such heinous acts. It was a closed trial, so the public never knew the truth, and he was executed with little ado. Someone definitely framed him. He was an investigative detective. He was on the he was on the case of someone, and they're just like, "Whoops, I'm too important. I can't get caught, so I'm gonna frame you." Other flipping. To this day, very few people know what really happened, even in our homeland. But what about Kazuma? Did he know? Did he know the truth about his father? No, no. Of course not. He was told his father passed from sickness. However, I suspect he may have had his doubts. Oh, why? As you know, I tried to guide Kazuma growing up, as if he were my own son. Then one day, he came to my office at the university and said, I've decided I want to travel to Great Britain and study there. Do, do you think he wanted to come here to investigate his father's death? I don't know. But when I looked into his eyes, I didn't know that there was no way I'd be able to stop him. Something else came to light in the trial the other day, actually. Oh, what? Well, having disappeared in Hong Kong and been missing for almost a year, Asma since turned up here in London working as the apprentice of Lord Van Zeeks. What? What? That's news to us. So, Lord Strongheart's telegram neglected to mention that part then. Kazuma's reappearance. As you know, we both thought Cosma had died on the steamship during our voyage to Great Britain in January. But he didn't die. He's alive. As you knew, didn't you, father? In actual fact, no. What I did know... ...is that when your ship docked in Hong Kong, he mysteriously vanished. We sent a team of investigators to Hong Kong to try to ascertain what had happened, but to no avail. But he's still alive. And here in London, you say? never dared even to dream it. How on earth did a young man not make contact? The government and the police have been chasing clues fruitlessly for months now. Well, it seems that he was suffering from amnesia. What? Amnesia? When we first came across him here, again here in London, I didn't know who either of us were. Let's see. He only regained his memory eight days ago. This is unbelievable. Yes, it's quite miraculous. I wonder why Lord Strongheart didn't let us know. Because he's the guilty dude. I must speak with him urgently. I wonder how cosmos has been these past few days. Would it be wrong of us to go and visit him? I'm in Britain. That began 16 years ago now. It's a distant memory, really. It's Eugene here, Genshin Asogi, and myself. We were the original three. The first judicial scholars from Japan to travel overseas to study. Ocean voyages were not what they are today, I can tell you. Sixteen years ago, things were tough for their generation. Your father was a, an exceptionally fine medical student at Yume University at the time, you know, you lady. Yes, grandmother told me. He went to do research at a great London hospital to study autopsy, practically unheard of in Japan. Yes, it was an eerie place sandwiched between the back of a prison and a burial ground. Is this the same cemetery that Asma's dad was buried in? Because... Suspicious. Ugh, not more talk of graves. Very often, there's no one willing to deal with bodies following autopsy work. But you see, autopsy labs have something of an unavoidable relationship with graveyards and prisons. Not my cup of tea at all. Do you remember that Scottish prison governor? Aiden, his name was? He was a good man. Yes, but then, of course, in our sixth year here, everything changed with that dreadful case. And Genshin was arrested for a series of the most gruesome murders. I simply couldn't believe it. I've known the man for years. A witness at the secret hearing, and I tried to speak in his defense, but... You went a little too far and ended up facing charges yourself, didn't you? Well, suffice to say that after the trial, we were sent back to Japan. There was nothing more we could do to save Genshin. It was a lost cause, sadly. <laughs> fishy, fishy. Well, if you'll excuse us now. Yes, I'd like to get this trunk up to my room as soon as possible. Oh, I... I'm sorry. I shouldn't have held you up here for so long. 
I'll call for the porter then. Just wait here. This is has gone off at a run. I'd like to stay and talk more, but I do have various preparations to make for tomorrow. Yes, of course. It must be a big responsibility representing our entire country. I wish you the best of luck. Naruhodo. I hope you'll keep an eye on Susato for me. Keep looking after her as you obviously have been. Oh no, I... I mean, if anyone's looking after anyone, it's her looking after me. Well, I do appreciate you being there for her, after all. I've been a miserable father to her. I've thoroughly let her down. Sorry? What do you mean? Well, it was 16 years ago that I started my long study tour here in Britain, as you know. The very year Susato was born. Yes, I heard. The birth of my daughter was the most joyous event of my life, but... Well, sadly, it was accompanied by the most tragic event of my life, too. Oh, yes. Susato-san hinted at something like that. It was a rather turbulent time at home. Anyway, I won't bore you with the details. The point is, I became rather less dependable than befits a grown man. And it was then that Seishiro offered me the opportunity to study here in Great Britain. I was too worried about you to leave you behind. Perhaps I was a little heavy-handed when it came to persuading you to accompany to London. So, that's what happened in a nutshell. And that's also the reason why I now feel compelled to give my daughter as many opportunities as I dare. But the world does not readily afford young women such things, I must say. I completely understand, Professor. Ah, one other thing, Naruhodo. If I may be so bold, I have a favor to ask you. Oh, really? Of course. What can I do for you? Well, the thing is, I... I'm so sorry that took so long. Mr. Sato, wait, isn't he the coach guy from... No, he's not the coachman. The coachman from previous trials, he was an old dude. But this guy looks so familiar. Now then, allow us to take your bags. Allow me to take your bags. One moment, if you please, Porter. Of course, sir. That machine around your neck, it's a camera, I believe. Quite right, sir. Just five shillings for a lovely photograph to commemorate a wonderful stay at the hotel, sir. Well, I think given the occasion, we could justify the expense. Ah, yes, yes, of course. Haha. <laughs> you... I'd like to thank you for coming with me, Miss Nanohodo. It's really made Father very happy, I think. Oh, well, I'm pleased then. But we were interrupted before. Professor Mikotobo was about to ask me something. Shall we return to Baker Street then? I expect Iris will have something, some delicious tea waiting for us. Hey, Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Oh, that's such a cute emote! That's so adorable! I hope you've been well, dude. Oh, there's so. I really need to update my emotes, but I don't know what to. Maybe I'll, like, buy emotes. Someone else could drop cuter, cuter emotes than I can. Getting more and more anxious about Kazuma, though. Perhaps I'll try to meet with Lord Strongheart later and ask after him. Can't we just go to, um, Barrack's house again? I don't think there's any, um... Oh wait, shoot, uh... I don't think, uh, I have any more... I... There's, like, nothing special to examine here. I still have to complete, I think, the spade and shovel achievement. Uh, he said back to Baker's. So oh, I will go there. <gasps> Cosmos mask. <laughs> what was that? A uh, a man screaming in a most unflattering way. Do you think it have been Mr. Sholmes? I do hope not. <laughs> I don't to do it anymore! Mon ami, mon ami! Not this disgraceful display, huh? Who are these people? Look at their hair, it's bright red! I think they must be clients of Mr. Sholmes. 
Right, you two. You're coming with me now. Down to the clink. No, not in prison. It's dark and damp and I don't like it. Oof, the darkness. It is my friend. I am not scared. <laughs> but you are always scared of these Zarg. Shut your mouth, you idiot. Those secrets in the Zarg and plan our next daring heist. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like it. Well, tough. We'll finish this down in the yard. I kept moving. Got of yourself. Put your love into it. I know, but like, uh, how? Do I don't know how to draw like super clear emotes. Um, and I never know what like emotion, like what theme I want it to be. Ah, uh, I really want to draw my own emotes. Bye then, Jitty. Have fun! Oh yeah, thanks, Iris. And thanks, you great detective. He Gina makes a fine detective herself, doesn't she? Oh, Susie. And Reno. Hello, Iris. We're home. Well, did you find your daddy? Yes, we arrived at the hotel just before he and his friends. Oh, well that's great news. I hope I'll get to see my daddy again soon. Oh, but you won't. Ah, yes, of course. Dr. John H. Wilson. Oh, Iris, all that remains is now is that greatest problem of no man to do that. The F happened to his hair? But before we concern ourselves with that, I believe some tea is in order, don't you, my dear fellows? Something wrong, Mr. Nadhodo. Do I have a crumb or such like on my face? Uh, not so much on your face as on your head, I'd say. Come along then, everyone. I brewed a lovely special blend. Time for tea. Whatever is going on here today? In that case, let us sit and drink now. For I'm, in fact, expecting a guest later today. First things first, I'm gonna examine Kazuma's mask on the table. The mask Kazuma wore when he was assigned to Lord Van Zeke's as his apprentice. When he cast it aside after the trial the other day, I just sort of picked it up. I ought to give it back to him, I suppose. But he has his memory back now, doesn't he? And I can't help feeling he might turn around and tell me coldly to wear it myself. But... your best friend? <sighs> okay, I think I'm done with... Okay, I need to check and see what achievements I have left. Um, episode. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Um, sorry, we're moving before we do anything. We're going to my legal consultant. And I'm going to examine the shovel. The spade is still here. Look! Please, Mr. Narodohodo. It's not a spade, as I think you well know. It's a shovel. It didn't take long to reignite that old argument. Ah, I have an idea. Let's give the implement a name, like Professor Hairbrain named his tools. Ooh, I never thought of doing that. From now on, then, let's call it Ryudosuke. No, no, no. It's clearly much more of a susato. The old argument has taken a new and unexpected turn, it seems. Got the ace spades, and now we can move back to shore. And then there's another achievement I could get in this chapter, and then the last one. Okay. We're two visitors. Um, Mr. Sholmes, who are the two gentlemen that were here before? Oh, just a pair of petty criminals. Nothing of significance. Of course, they have to make a living somehow. And when the mood takes me, I'm willing to turn a blind eye to all manner of infraction. When the mood takes you? All manner of infractions? But... When such fellows set their sights on Mr. Herlock Sholmes, well, that's when their luck runs out. Hi, you were the target of a crime, Mr. Sholmes? But I quickly devised a plan to entrap them and deliver them into our young detective ally. 
should have asked Gracie to come too. We could have had an arresting tea party. I did send word, but no answer was forthcoming. The man is consummately in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's a word for it, I'm sure. Aha! I have it. A bungler. That's the word. A good job he's not here to hear you say that. So those redheads have been up to no good. I wonder what the men did. No doubt we'll find out in this case. Um, what was about the greatest problems known to man that you mentioned before? Is it another fiendishly intricate crate? <laughs> fiendishly intricate case, Mr. Scholz? Hmm, how should I best explain it? Are you aware of the theory of evolution by natural selection, perchance? How about characters holding up jelly toast and make a character with poofy hair, poofy toast? <laughs> oh yeah, maybe if I make them toast theme, because then that would like match with my channel. I'll think about that. Thank you for the idea. Um, well, I think I've heard talk of it somewhere. Possibly. It's a revolutionary scientific theory that was nearly proposed 40 years ago now. According to its author, Mr. Darwin, we humans were once apes who lived in the treetops. Wait, what? We, we were apes? Indeed, and from the very moment those apes descended from the canopy to live as humans, it has been our lot to be at the mercy of the greatest problem known to man. Our lot? What is this greatest problem, Mr. Sholmes? Why, is it not obvious, my dear madam? The problem of rent. Ah... But seriously, rent sucks. But did you not receive a rather large sum of money from Madame Two Spells only the other day? Pshaw! A large sum! One potted herb for Iris and a new motor car for me later, and all of it has quite disappeared, I assure you. You bought yourself a car? Honestly, Harley, you know you squandered it. Yes, well, anyway, two days ago... I discovered the answer to man's greatest problem, for the coming month at least. And what was the answer? Why, there is a substantial clue before your very eyes. Don't tell me. Let me see. Humans are sorry creatures, unable to see what is in front of their noses. Let me give you some assistance. Don't look, but observe me very closely. There is one particular feature about my person that has changed. You should notice it in the end, I think. In the end? It's the first thing we noticed. It's been stabbing me in both eyes right from the very beginning of our conversation. I think we might need another clue before we uncover the full answer, Mr. Narahodo. Thanks for the hint. I'll be tearing my hair out if this charade goes on much longer. A lie you told. Mr. Scholz, isn't it about time you told us the truth? Just over a week ago, you said to us... I'll now tell you something of the very first importance, my dear fellow. Great detectives are wont to lie. It will serve you well to remember that. That case aboard the SS Buria in January. Asma wasn't killed, and you knew he wasn't dead at the time. So what was really going on? The fellow was unconscious for a very long time. If he hadn't regained consciousness when he did, his life would have been in mortal peril. Of course, a side effect of the prolonged comatose state was amnesia, as you know now. As you now know. It's a simple enough task to silence the crew. But how? After they carried him out of the cabin, I assembled them in a the lobby area. And I made them swear to leave him unconscious and have him unlaid from the ship in Hong Kong as a murdered corpse. But he did get off in Hong Kong? But then how did he make it to- huh? Oh, how horrible. It was necessary to find some material with which to persuade the crewmen to keep their word, of course. But why? Why do it in the first place? Oh, no! I missed it! Ah, uh, I thought he was just gonna dot 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 dot! Uh, no! Stop! Shut up! Let me get to the history! I will be at liberty to elaborate in due course, but for the time being, I would like to reassure you. I didn't foresee subsequent events. What events? His disappearance in Hong Kong. 
Oh, he wasn't supposed to disappear in Hong Kong. I believe I may have made a gross error of judgment. Mr. Sholmes. Is that it? Really? That's all we're gonna say about that? Hey, hey. Damn it. Do people. Court record, um, people. Iris. Eugenia's 43. Oh, they're both 43, so they're not that old. 16 years ago, they were what? I can't math. They were 27. Okay. okay. Do I move now? What the heck? Oh, okay. I guess I'm just gonna go to Chief Justice's office. This, here's the final draft of the opening address for tomorrow's proceedings. I've supplemented your original with the figures you asked for, the, for from the yard. I see. Excellent work. Thank you. You're welcome, my lord. What's Lord Van Zeke's doing here? Seems to be an awful lot of tension in the air, wouldn't you say? Stonehart is the baddie. This place is stifling enough as it is. I really don't need any more tension. My apologies, I didn't notice you come in. Your small stature and dark dress make you all but invisible to me. Oh, no, no, it's entirely my fault for wearing black, I'm sure. From now on, you must dress in white from head to toe whenever you come here. Now then, Mr. Nadohodo. Yes, my lord? I'm right here. Ugh, kill me now. There's something wrong. Perhaps it's a little too hot in here for you. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, I've never experienced a room at such perfect temperature. If you're sure, the beads of sweat coughing their way down your face seem to suggest otherwise. Because of the daggers you're staring at me with, mainly. As you've no doubt aware, my International Forensic Science Symposium begins tomorrow. In fact, your father arrived in London earlier today, I hear, madam. Oh, yes, that's right, my lord. It's extremely honored to have been invited. I'll leave the remaining preparations for the meeting room in your capable hands then, Lord Vanzix. I will attend at once. Why you look at me? He had a very cold stare as he left, didn't he? No, but I haven't done anything. But have I? These past few days, my feet have barely touched the ground, I must say. My dedicated right hand of many years was recently put out of action in a spectacular fashion. Oh, sorry to hear that. Is your left hand still of service? What's the matter, Hodo? He's talking about Dr. Sai. Ah, of course. I'm terribly sorry about that. I was just, um... Fear yeah, not. You've done nothing wrong. Dr. Sai's own wrongdoing precipitated the situation. You needn't concern yourself with it any further. That would be a lot easier to do if it weren't for the piercing stare you're giving me. Well, Van Zeeks is doing an admirable job of holding the fort. Though disturbingly, his apprentice has been missing since yesterday. Oh, missing? What's become of Kazuma Sama now? I assume I converse with him more. Yep. Not too long ago, visitor numbers to the Great Exhibition exceeded 30 million. 30 million? Are there even that many people in the world? As a comparison, Mr. Nadhodo, the population of the Imperial Capital, Tokyo, is 2 million. I'll be opening the International Forensic Science Symposium in the exhibition's main auditorium. This event has been two years in the making. Two years of preparations and negotiations with other countries. Sounds like a tremendous achievement. Congratulations! The 20th century will see the wholesale adoption of forensic investigation techniques. And cooperation between policing organizations around the globe will be essential. This is what I think happened. So, Kazuma's dad, um, he was an investigative detective 
who wanted to use scientific methods. But Strongheart's like, oh, well, a foreigner is better than me. I'm going to take his ideas. And he offed Kazuma's dad. That is what I think happens. As Urchi. Which is why... This landmark first symposium has to be hosted here at the heart of our great British Empire. In order that Scotland Yard can become the leading investigative organization in the new world. He's the same as ever, I see. That passion of his is quite something. You're every bit as passionate in your own way, I'm sure, Mr. Nadahoro. I'm the only person in this country who truly cares about a future that embraces forensic science. Are you? It was my intention to become Her Majesty's Attorney General and reform the Yard from the ground up. But the disgrace of the forensic investigation team has been a bitter blow to my ambitions. He thinks you off the old Attorney General too. I first established a forensic investigation team a year ago, experimentally to talk. Yeah, that's it, because they said that Kazuma's dad was close friends with the Attorney General. And so after Kazuma's dad gets framed for murder, the old Attorney General leaves, and this guy comes in. It's all making sense. It's all so clear to me. Watch me be wrong, but that's my hunch right now. Uh, experiments to start with. With Dr. Scythe at the helm, it was steadily accruing an impressive record of achievement. I was on the verge of changing its name and of elevating its status to a full-blown forensic investigation department. And can you not do that now? Obviously. Nobody wants to hear anything about it at the moment. Even I can't keep the story out of the papers. Six million Londoners will be cursing forensic science now. This incident will set back our country's advancement in the field by a good ten years, I'd say. Unintended repercussions of our trial. Simply couldn't have overlooked what had happened, though. Of course not. We should all be grateful to you both. But I don't think he is. In a way, I'll still reform this country's policing when I become attend Attorney General. Wait, is he not Attorney General? Then, who's the Attorney General? It's right to lay my plans, but it won't alter them. Nothing will stand in my way. Missing Apprentice. Um, about Lord Van Zeke's Apprentice. Ah, yes, that came as a surprise to me, I must say. And you and he are old friends. How did he become an apprentice to Lord Van Zeke's in the first place? It came about three months ago. An unidentified Asian man was apprehended by border police. They found him hiding aboard a large goods vessel. Oh my! So he stowed away to get here! There are no papers to identify him, no passport. He was suffering from amnesia too. Other than the fact he was clearly of Eastern descent, there were no clues as to who he was. I decided to assign him to Lord Van Zeeks. That way I could keep an eye on him. But then, why the mask? I didn't want to burden Lord Van Zeeks with tiresome explanations about why he had an Eastern apprentice. Because it would be so much easier to explain why he was wearing a mask. He's proving to be a great help to Lord Van Zeeks. I have high hopes for his future. By the way, do you know where he's gone? No idea, but I believe he's left London for the time being. No, why'd you leave? Oh. I take it you also didn't know. That the man's father was what? One of our country's most infamous criminals, I mean. Genshin Asuki. Has a must father's crimes. Oops! Actually, press B button. What we learned from that trial eight days ago was a huge shock. Finding out my friend's father was... Ah, oh, yes. Genshin Asogi. The professor case ten years ago caused a great stir here in Britain. There were such awful murders and unprecedented, using a ferocious dog as a murder weapon. And no one would have believed the culprit was a foreign student invited to study here by the government. So the true identity of the killer couldn't be made public then, and it can't be made public now. Nobody in your country knows about knows it was him, and neither do the citizens of London. The main motivation was to avoid aggravating relations between our two nations at the time, I understand. Correct. However, it has been 
To be noted that there were some supporters of the professor's apparent cause. What? Supporters of a mass murderer? The majority of the man's victims were a blight on the aristocracy of the day. Somewhat ironically, their deaths actually benefited society as a whole. Or so a fair few thinkers in London, but anyway. Right, I see. But it was still murder, wasn't it? It seems very similar, doesn't it? The idea of the Reaper of the Bailey. <laughs> Something is afoot! Um, let's go back to Shoulders and Sweet. I legal consult C. What to do? Good news that Professor Bikotopo arrived safely, isn't it? Yes, it's wonderful, and the fact that Father has been invited to this important international event really makes me very proud to be his daughter. Your father, Judge Jikochu. <laughs> Jikoku. Us. And Kazuma, of course. There's an ever-increasing number of Japanese here in Britain's capital, isn't there? Well, yes, I suppose so. But London does have a population of 6 million people, so I think we're still a minority. Susan's is -san's father, who came here as a visiting student 16 years ago, and Kazuma. It's almost as if some great power has been at work, drawing them here across the ocean to London. And I feel as though the waters are starting to swell again now. Okay, that told me nothing. I think he's hi- yeah, Strongheart is definitely hiding something. He is so suspicious. Whoa! What- what happened? Chicken Tuna, thank you so much for the 19 month sub! I hope you've been well, dude. Thank you so much for your support. Seriously, where- what am I supposed to do now? I think I examined anything at the hotel. Did I have to talk to Strongheart more? Or do I go- hmm. This is why walkthroughs exist, so I don't waste time on this. Okay. Da -da -da. Examine the shovel. Mizzou Francis. Oh! Huh? Okay. That's pretty not easy to see. So apparently I'm supposed to examine this newspaper. This looks like last, last week's edition. What's that article circled in red ink there? It's an advertisement column. It says... The Red-Headed League. The Red-Headed League? What's that? I don't know. I've never heard of it before, but... There's something on my face. Clearly this has something to do with that lively hair. Red-headed League article has been entered into the court record. I guess it would have been super obvious if I examined everything, but um... I didn't! Red-headed League, on account of the bequest of the late Ezekiah, Ezekiah, Ezekiah Hopkins of Lebanon, Pennsylvania, USA, there is now another vacancy open which entitles a member of the League to a salary of four pounds a week for purely nominal services. All red-headed men who are sound in body and mind and above the age of 21 years are eligible. Apply in person on the morning of the 31st at the large park on Lime Street. Get four pounds per week if you are a redhead. A most fantastic money-making opportunity. Hmm. Oops, I forgot to present it. Haha. <laughs> I go... Um, I gotta go back on Sherlock Holmes again. Red-headed down to the Baskervilles. I never actually read any Sherlock Wait, no, I lied. I read one. Because my brother used to read Sherlock Holmes um, stories. And I remember reading one, but I don't remember which one it was. And then we read some Agatha Christie, like Poi Poirot? Poi po Poirot. Sherlock Hercule Poirot. Whatever. However you pronounce his name. Yeah. Looks as though someone circled in an advertisement in this paper, Mr. Sholmes. The Red-Headed League. Hmm. Does this strike you in some way? 
I was thinking that just maybe it might be related. Your bright red hair. <laughs> so, at last you've learned to apply my methods, Mr. Nadhodo. Sorry. In the first instance, and quite indispensable, observation. Believe me, I could have seen that hair with my eyes shut. So then, allow me to regale you with detail details of my latest exploits. Regale or boast? The Red-Headed League. So, what is the Red-Headed League which seems to be the subject of the advertisement you've circled? How many times are you going to say advertisement you circled? You've noticed it in the paper, then. That, my dear fellow, was going to be the source of this month's rent payment. It was? How? According to the advertisement, the Red-Headed League is a distinguished institution of fellows of unspecified governance. In fact, the only condition for becoming a member is having red hair. That doesn't entirely surprise me. But listen to what the lucky redheads receive once they join. An unconditional salary of four pounds a week. Oh my, four pounds a week? But why? why? What are they paying people for? That I don't know. No details are given in the advertisement. Surely every red-headed person in the country would be flocking to join in that case. Right, Susie. There's no time to lose. I'll put in my application at once. So will I. Just on the off chance. That might be stretching a point, I think. Trouble is, we have a fixed number of members, you see. Oh, I see. So once a certain number of people have joined, no one else can. But as luck would have it, one member recently passed away. I wasn't particularly lucky for the resident in question, I feel, Mr. Sholmes. I feel like there's gonna there's gonna be like huge gathering of redheaded people and then someone's gonna die. So you decide to try try to join in his place. Right. I mean, look at me. Have you ever seen such a red-headed fellow? Um, no. So why? Why did it have to go so wrong? What on earth happens? A blunder, Mr. Nodhodo. Though it pains to pains me to admit it. Your blunder. Yo, Rico, how you doing? Long time no see. I hope you've been well, dude. What did you actually do to your hair, Mr. Sholmes? Glad you asked, Mr. Sato. But you see, on top of my head is neither dyed nor a hairpiece. I changed the color of my hair overnight by the wonders of chemistry. Chemistry? I was conducting some research into a method of rejuvenating spent tea leaves. And in the course of my work, I stumbled upon a potion that, when taken, turns one's hair a flame-like red. Would you like to try it? It will make every hair on your body perfectly crimson. Oh, thank you. I think I'll pass. But Mr. Sholmes, is it quite safe to drink? Surely it's bad for you, isn't it? Ha ha ha. Ah, amateurs are always hampered by such fears. Oh, I should never have doubted you, Mr. Sholmes. You mean to say... But of course. To earn four pounds a week, one must be prepared to turn a blind eye to a little danger. That degree of red signals more than just a little danger, surely. Objection! Hey, oh, Rube, long time no see. I hope you've been well. What I miss? Nothing much. Just me not streaming a lot because I've been um, hanging out with family. Still getting through Great Ace Attorney, and now AI um, Somnium Files Nirvana Nirvana Initiative came out, so I gotta play that too. So many games to play, so little time. But I hope you've been well. I hope your streams have been going well, dude. So anyway, Hurley left full of confidence yesterday with his new red hair. For the park on Lime Street, where the red-headed league were interviewing prospective new members. So what went wrong? The whole park was choked with red-headed folk, like a coster's orange barrow. I queued for eight hours solid before at last I reached the front. But when the panel of interviewers saw me, they immediately said, Ah, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, are you disguised to conduct an investigation? So naturally, I had no choice but to reply. Shh, don't give me away. 
after which I could do little else but turn and leave. Then this morning, when I looked in the mirror, irritation stirred within me. I turned that pair into the police. Yeah, what a disaster. For Hurley and those two redheads. A little LED never hurt anybody? What's LED? I felt that my streams, I'll slowly come back to it, move to a bigger apartment recently and slowly getting things together. That's awesome! Congratulations on the new apartment! Yeah, it's gonna take a long time to unpack everything and settle, but take your time, like, place everything where you want to put it, and then slowly get back into stream. Oh, woo! Life's been good for you then. That's good. Ling a ling a ling! Aha! Here is my guest now, my latest client, with money to spend. Ooh, I do hope it's an exciting case, Hurley. Remember, Iris, we are presents gripped by the greatest problem known to man. Must be willing to accept any case, no matter how unstimulating. Save locating a runaway, of course. Don't spare anyone's feelings, will you? Oh dear, I'm afraid that Hurley can lack a little tact, especially just before the rent is due. Oh my! Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Erlock Sholmes! Please! Oh, please! Please find my husband! He's run away! <laughs> He'll do it! Upset me? I beg your pardon? Never mind. A personal matter. My apologies. What exactly are you trying to say, Mr. Nadahudu? I didn't say a word! Come, my dear madam, be seated. Iris, some tea, if you please. What? Oh, lad. I'm on my phone cooking in the kitchen, sorry. No, it's all good. What you making? I had some mac and cheese with chalky milk for dinner. I am an adult. <laughs> What's the matter, Mrs. Sato? Oh, it's just that gentlewoman. You're sure I've seen her somewhere before, very recently. Yes, now that you come to mention it. We have? As I explained earlier, my name is Evie Vigil. I implore you to take the case, sir. Money is no object, simply name your figure. Money and wealth are of little consequence to me, madam. Being offered a case to solve is the reward enough. You're not taking money? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you are the picture of benevolence. I will, of course, make a mental note of your offer, however, for contingent reasons. I trust you'll remember your words also. Um, if I might inquire, sir. This gentleman and lady would be... Oh, um, me? What am I about to tell you? I should like to communicate in the strictest confidence, you understand. Ah, these are my friends. I assure you, you may say before this pair anything which you may say to me. Ah, I see. I can vouch for this gentleman personally, after all. He's hard of hearing. Why did I ever get my hopes up? Ooh, fajitas, those sound yummy. are you? I don't remember you. Forgive me for asking, Mrs. Vigil, but have we met somewhere before? Quite recently, perhaps? Oh my! Pshaw! My dear fellow, what is your intention? Clearly you have no ability to differentiate the facial features of the English. That's racist. If you wish to invite the lady to tea, you must do so in a more gentlemanly fashion. Is it possible? But you're the nice young lawyer from the trial I attended last week. Ah, I knew I recognized her. She was in the jury? Oh, she was. I have a man's fate in the palm of one's hand. Oh gosh, oh golly, it sends shivers down my spine. Oh, I gave her a lower voice. Whoops, I'll change. I didn't quite recognize her because she's acting so differently now. It must be very difficult for you as a lawyer. Being hard of hearing, I mean. Pardon? <laughs> Oh dear, I'm so sorry. Don't worry if you can't hear. It was frippery, really. Nothing more. Now look what you've started, Mr. Sholmes. Thank you very much. 
I believe it would be prudent for you to sit quietly in the corner. Yes. But, wow, this is- this case is taking a lot of setup to move into the meat of the story. Tell us about your husband, madam. Mr. Vigil, my daily, is 40 years of age. Photograph here. Haha, <laughs> his name is Daily Vigil. Ha 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 ha. An entirely unremarkable gentleman, by appearance at least. How long have you been married? It'll be 15 years this year. A cordial relationship, and my husband's income is more than adequate, so we live quite comfortably. As it will appear, I need only look at you to know these things. Oh gosh! Your dress is the latest style, your hat's clearly regularly groomed, and your eyes are animated. In short, I have no inkling as to why your husband might have disappeared, correct? Way to call her dumb. That's right, he's a kind of man with a strong sense of loyalty. He rather does do he rather dotes on me. Which would point to the possibility that he has become embroiled in some incident or other. Oh, that is exactly what I fear much have happens, Mr. Sholmes. I'm quite beside myself. My husband's employment is somewhat unusual, you see. What if he's incurred some miscreant's ill will? He's the redhead that died. Wait a minute, um... Oh, the photograph isn't part of our... Wait. Part of our people? Oh, never mind. I thought he was a redhead. Evie Vigil was 36. How old is Sholmes? 34. Oh, wow. She's older than him. What exactly is your husband's line of work? The warder at the prison. The prison? Which prison? A guard? That is somewhat unusual. Prison warder. So, your husband is a prison warder. That's right, yes. Well, in actual fact, he's the chief warder. Indeed, I see. Well, chief prison warder certainly qualifies as something of a specialist occupation. Yes, it does indeed. My poor husband must prepare those dreadful punishments and see that they're carried out. Her voice is too similar to Sean, so I'm gonna give her a higher pitched voice again. Dreadful punishments? Does she mean capital punishments? And at such times, he must occasionally spend a night or two in prison dormitory. With that extra responsibility, he is reenumerated more handsomely than the other warders. Of course, make no mention of my husband's work to the neighbors. Yes, I believe your prudence is justified. Tell me, at what prison your husband engaged? Barclay Prison, Mr. Sholmes. Really? Barclay? Oh, a fine establishment. If I'm not mistaken, there's a large cemetery just behind it. Yes, that's correct. No Gate Cemetery. No. No Gate Cemetery? The very place we were discussing in court. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable, my dear fellow. And yet undeniable. Can they read my thoughts? I never, like, said it out loud, but okay. Sorry, Mr. Jones. I'm afraid you've lost me. Ah, pay no heed, madam. Pay no heed. A private matter. This can't really be a coincidence, can it? Coincidence or Danon? So, to the matter of your husband's disappearance. When did you realize he was missing? Please try not to laugh. It was yesterday. I'm sorry? Yesterday? That really is recent. Laughably so. The truth is, my husband does at times have occasion to spend a night away for his work. It's a little out of the ordinary for him to not return home at night, but this is different. For him not to make any contact for a whole day, this certainly never happened before. Oh, my dear Daly, whatever can have happened? My dear Mrs. Vigil, please calm yourself. Now then, have you contacted the police? Why, naturally, but sadly, they refuse to listen to my pleas as my husband has only been missing for one day. I was asked to wait patiently at home. In truth, Mrs. Vigil, I concur with the police. However, let us not be hasty. I see no reason why we should not engage my detective powers to track your husband down anyway. 
Oh, thank you, Mr. Sholmes. And furthermore, let me assure you, the chance to solve the greatest problem known to man for another month has no bearing on my decision. I seek only to put a sweet smile on another Londoner's face. That's really all there is to it. With my eternal gratitude, I shall pay any sum you care to mention. Give me a million dollars. Seek only to put the sweet's rent in your landlady's purse. That's all there is to it. Thank you for everything you have shared with us, Mrs. Vigil. I believe I have all the information I need to begin my investigation. Oh, please report to me soon with good news, sir. Fear not, madam. In a day or two, I shall be contact contacting you with a heartening report, I'm sure. Soon? Oh, how splendid, Mr. Sholmes. I don't think it'll be splendid. I think your husband will be dead, sadly, but... Meh. Good news should be delivered early, I always say. You'd be so kind as to leave the photograph of your husband in my possession. The photograph of Mr. Fisher has been entered into court record. Thank you. Now, allow me to show you the door. Okay, so it's just straight up this. Not in color. Hmm. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Sholmes. You've been simply marvelous. You know, I think it every time, Hurley. But how do you come out with such nonsense? Been news in a day or two. Are you sure? I can't be sure, of course. But then I didn't swear on it. I merely gave the good woman some hope. I hope to be able to give her some good news, one might say. After all, the rent must be paid by the end of the day tomorrow. If by that time I've successfully located Mr. Vigil, we shall be mutually relieved. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Nadahuru? Don't look at me with those pleading eyes. Well, my dear fellow, did you hear the details of the case? Yes, my hearing is surprisingly good, actually. Excellent. What did you make of it? Well, I was surprised to learn where her husband worked. At Barclay Prison, I mean. Ah, so you noted that. Of course, especially with the mention of Lowgate Cemetery. Lowgate Cemetery is at the rear of Barclay Prison. It was renowned among our students at the university for being haunted by the ghosts of condemned convicts. Barclay Prison is where that notorious man was incarcerated. The professor. And now a warder from the prison has mysteriously disappeared, it would seem. It's all very peculiar. Indeed. But nothing you can't handle, I'm quite certain, Mr. Nathodo. Sorry? Run along to the prison and see what you can glean. Would you? It's the prison governor you want. No doubt the man is equally worried. But aren't you going to go yourself? Your freaking case. It's your rent. Surely you didn't ask. You can't possibly be seen out with this hair. Which is why you have a hat. But didn't you go to Lime Street with that hair? That was quite a different matter. I leave it in your capable hands. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm rather busy. Are you going to shave your head for the next time I see you? Of course you are. Oh my goodness. Do you guys realize that every jury just about is involved in a case? You're right. Oh my gosh, like... Most people I've encountered... Oh no, who moved my... Huh. Um... Yeah. People in the jury are either um, suspects in a case or clients in a case. Wow. Well, I mean, it's a good way to reuse assets, so good on them. New location of... Uh, what the freak? It's been an hour and we're s now we're starting to get into... Barclay Prison is on the outskirts of London, backing in onto a lonely burial ground. Its four high outer walls loomed quietly before us in the fog. Having requested a meeting, we were shown into the governor's office in the watchtower. I'm getting quite sleepy, so I can't read. 
Oh my gosh, his clock is a guillotine. This place is full of hardened criminals. I cannot remember the last time a civilian was doing here. And you didn't want to talk to an inmate, but to me. Oh, he's Caden. Do you know Ken who I am? I'm the governor, Barry Caden. Hmm? Barricade in. Ha ha ha. That's why he's such a big guy. Oh, yes, it's a pleasure. I'm Ryunosuke Naruhodo, defense lawyer. Nice to know, I see. Does that mean... Yes, I'm a visiting student of law from the Empire of Japan. Japan? Did you say Japan? Um, yes? Well, there's no any... Wait, there's no any of your kind in here, laddie. Maybe you should try the prison next door, eh? I didn't notice another prison next door, sir. Anyway, we came to ask- Oh, uh, I didn't like to be so direct, but... I have no intention of speaking with the likes of you, suspicious-looking Easterners. Racist! Get all my hair. So as soon as he finds out that we're from Japan, he reacts like this. That surely means... I think it's because of the professor case. You think so too? Ten years ago, Genshin Asuki, also known as a professor, was incarcerated at this prison. And then, after his execution, he apparently re-emerged from his grave in the cemetery behind the prison. I might have known. You're all stiffing around about the case, aren't ya? Your agents, eh? Part of the professor's great web, no doubt. No, not at all. We're just... Get going with ya! Or I'll punch your lights out. We're going, we're going. Clearly the ghost of that killer still haunts this place. We're not going to get anywhere here. Unless we can somehow prove to this man that there's nothing suspicious about us. Governor Kaden. What are you thinking, Mr. Sato? I feel sure that name came up in a conversation recently somewhere. I was wondering if whoever mentioned him might have some ideas to help us. Not to think of it, I have the same feeling. Uh, wait, I want to ex- oh, I said get out! Oh, that scared me. I wanted to examine. Uh, no, sorry! Ah, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I meant to go to move. Who was it? I think it was, but... I don't think he wants to deal with any, uh, Japanese people. So even if I ask her dad... That's Professor Mikotoba over there. Oh, hello, you two. I was just taking a moment to catch up on the world now that I'm unpacked. But where's Judge Jikoku? Yes, he's not the relaxing sort. He's taking himself off to pay respects to all the legal bigwigs. Having only just arrived in the country today? Then the city is full of energy. Um, Professor, you mentioned something before. About how you'd known the prison governor at Barclay Prison. Oh, Governor Caden, you mean. What is the same man? Father, we must speak with the governor. But he refused to talk to us. He said we were suspicious Easterners. Well, I'm sure if I accompanied you, it would be a very different story. Oh, would you? That would be wonderful, if you have time now. Sadly, as you can see, I'm very busy at the- Busy at the moment? You are reading a newspaper. Is he drinking coffee on a comfortable settee? Now, now, I have a rather lot to prepare for tomorrow, you know? Oh, sorry. I didn't say that out loud, did I? You Mikotobas are alarmingly good at reading people's thoughts. But could it be that you Naruhodos are alarmingly bad at hiding your thoughts? Let's not fall out now. I have an idea. What's he writing on that piece of paper? Here's a letter of introduction for you. Hopefully when he sees my name, he'll change his tune. Ah, thank you. Letter of introduction has been a blah blah blah. Good luck then. Hold up, let me examine this just in case there's anything on the back. Blackbird line. Oh, it looks like this is some sort of steamship ticket. The SS Grouse, first cabin 001. Yokohama departure 11th September, London arrival 1st November. It takes a month and a half? That's crazy. Ah, that's the boat that Professor Mikotoba and Judge Jikoku came on from Japan, isn't it? 
Yes, I think it's called at Dunkirk on the north coast, uh, north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. I think it's been almost a year since we arrived on in Dover on the SS Buria. It's a shame not to keep uh, your ticket as a memento of your trip, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I have mine safe in me, safely in my diary. And I keep mine in my wallet, so I bet I have it with me at all times. Why can't I read? Oh gosh, I'm getting so tired. Oh, well, how strange. Where could I have gone? Did you like this on purpose, Mr. Natahodo? Did I imagine it, or was that comment accompanied by a little sigh? Details of the letter of introduction have been updated. Why would that be important? Huh? Let's read the note. Professor Mikotopa has wonderful handwriting, doesn't he? This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Is it just me, or does that make me sound extremely untrustworthy? I do wish he'd at least call you a nice young man. I'm really not sure that would help. Why is the steamship a bit important? Okay, back to the prison. We present the letter. If you just cast your eyes over this, Governor Caden. What's this then? You can't pull the rule over my eyes, you good for nothing, Japanese student! We could do that. That. That young jock from the forensics laboratory? That Mikotoba? He was a jock? Yes, exactly. Him! Oh dear. Perhaps I should have said something sooner. I'm Yuji Mikotoba's daughter, Susato. Jings! You're the young man's daughter! I just didn't think to mention that before. I. I apologize. Hey, well, you'd best take a seat then. Could I offer you a cup of tea, perhaps? And didn't forget to try one of these wee handcuff biscuits. Your father's influence is nothing short of amazing. I'm bitterly regretting not announcing who I was from the outset now. So then, what can I do for you, Hen? Well, we're currently investigating a case. It's one of your warders, you see. He's gone missing. Missing? That's right. It's surely been reported to you as well, being the prison governor. I have no- I have le heard nothing of the sort. There's no missing persons in my prison. Oh. But how can that be? It's Mr. Daily Vigil, your chief warder. Eh? Vigil? That's right. His wife came to us and asked us to investigate his disappearance. Let's skip the part about him only going missing yesterday for now. Clearly that means something to him. Would you be so kind as to tell us what you know, sir? Aye, aye, of course. Um, first. Chief Warder Vigil. We understand that Mr. Vigil is the chief warder here at the prison. Aye, that he was. Strong sense of responsibility and dedicated to the job, no doubt about it. He's a fine warder. He was? Did he get fired? Sorry, did you say was? Hi, he didn't work here no more. He left the job. Oh my. When was this exactly? Question. When was it about? It could have been much less than... Ten years ago now? But he just went missing... And he didn't seem to have red hair. But... Mm... What? Ten years ago? He stopped working here ten years ago? And ten years ago was when the professor case happened. Why, as I minded, you can... I ha I have to heard the fellow's name in all that time. That's a word if he's gone missing, though. But Mrs. Vigil made no mention of it. I think perhaps, Mr. Nanohodo, that his wife simply doesn't know. I think she's unaware that he no longer works here. Governor Caden, can you tell us what happened? Why did Mr. Vigil give up his job here? 
that important, is it? Yes, I believe it may be. What are you thinking, Mr. Narahodo? I can't help wondering, even that it was ten years ago. Ah! Which was exactly when the professor was being held at his prison. Ten years ago. So Mr. Vigil actually resigned from the position of chief order ten years ago, you're telling us. What happened to make him leave the job? An actual fact, he didn't leave the job willingly. He had no choice in the matter. You mean, he was dismissed? It was after a particular walk. Sorry? A walk? I don't know. That's our word for it in here. A walk to the gallows. An execution? The job of the chief order to prepare the gallows tree and oversee any executions, you see. Only, Vigil did something unthinkable on that last walk he was manning. What did he do? Sorry, but I cannot reveal the information. But well, I can tell you that it's very rare for a chief order to be relieved of his post. But why wouldn't Mrs. Vigil know about it? She appears to be under the impression that her husband still works here. I wouldn't can... I wouldn't can any about that, I'm afraid. Can you perhaps answer one more question about the circumstances of his dismissal? And what would that be, then? That last execu execution that Mr. Visual was responsible for overseeing. Was it by any chance the professor's? My thoughts exactly. Sorry, really am. From that, no, I'm no at liberty to answer that. C. Which means, yes, he was. <laughs> Professor Mikotoba. My father came to Britain all those years ago in order to study forensic medicine. And you seem to have been well acquainted. Dead room, the prison, and the cemetery have a lot to do with one another. After all, they need fresh corpses for forensic research. You can? Yes, I can imagine. The advancement of medical science isn't always particularly pal palatable. The father worked in a laboratory just on the far side of the graveyard. The basement of St. Sinners. It's still, today, still there today. St. Sinners? That's come up before, I'm sure. I don't remember when it came up. Yes, that's right. We've been there. We have? <laughs> Mikotoba and I often used to ride in a carriage together and negotiate terms. For more fresh material, I suppose. Aye, and we used to sit here for hours and gab on a boot dissection and all those sorts. Oh, taste me back. I got another emo for you, sleepy toast, slur toast. Okay, I gotta write these down. These are good ideas. <laughs> sleepy toast. Um, what else? Let's see. I gotta do a sleepy toast. I got- I have to do a heart. You know, if I see any you know, cute guys while I'm playing games, and I'm just like, oh, I like how he looks. Okay, that leaves three more slots. Think of three more emotes. <laughs> oh, pot of tea and a plate of cuff biscuits, of course. Oh, charming. He's a good fellow, your father. Liable and dead set on his work. I'm afraid. I'll never understand you, Japanese. As a Genshin Asugi, I suppose. Racist. It's like, just because of one person, you're like, I don't trust your entire race. Like, that's messed up. Well. I don't tell you anything else. Thank you so much for your time, Governor. Oh, one moment before you away, hun. He just carries an axe on his belt. Okay, cool. Oh, I have it here somewhere. Ah, found it. Here, take this as a wee souvenir of your visit to the prison. What is it? That's Vigil's dismissal notice. It's ten years old now, of course. 
Hi. You sure? Hi. It's no trouble at all. It's not the original, mind. It's no the original? Maybe that's really how they talk. Visual's dismissal notice. Thank you very much, Governor Caden. No, I don't want to read this. 25th of June, Chief Warder Daily Vigil is relieved of his post with immediate effect for having violated Clause 132 of Her Majesty's Code of Conduct for Prisons. All rights to redundancy, pay, and other financial benefits are fully revoked. Reason for dismissal, aiding and abetting the escape from this prison of convict, blah blah blah, blah just prior to his execution. Details of this escape are still being investigated. Full cooperation with inquiries will be expected. Prisoner, prison Governor Barry Caden. Additional notes, indications are that the jailbreak plot was conceived prior to the convict's incarceration. It's believed that the convict engages some form of negotiation with prison staff in order to secure assistance. Full disclosure of information regarding these negotiations will be demanded. Then was there a plot? Where they were like, oh, hey, Genshin, you're gonna be sent to jail, but don't worry, we'll get you out scot-free. But then it's just like, nope, you're really gonna die. And take the fall. How many stars are there? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. P-O-P-R-O-F-E-S-S-O-R. Plus there's only nine. Pro. And S. Nope. Okay, so it's just a random number of blocks. Hmm. Well, let me turn. Do me a favor and never come back here. That place is closed. What is it? I don't think. Well, I think we ought to return to Baker Street for the time being. Yes, I agree. We need to report back to Mr. Scholz with what we found about Mr. Vigil. What will he tell Mrs. Vigil, I wonder? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Pardon me for the yawn. I started working out again. Like, um... Intensely, so my abs hurt, and I started walking again. So, I am... the tired. We're back! Hello, you two! I thought you'd be back before long, so I baked some scones for us all. Ah, so that's what the delicious smell is. Greetings, my dear fellows! His hair is blue now! You returned a good deal sooner than I was anticipating! Um, hello, Mr. Sholmes. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Say nothing. Your thoughts are written all over your faces in any case. It turns out that it may have been advisable to test my hair color restoration tonic before application. Oh my. Pray, tell me, what of our water friends? Have you gar garnered some new information? Oh, um, yes. Something very surprising, in fact. Though it's not a patch on your hair, to be honest. It most certainly isn't. But still, we discovered that shows. Drop everything, Sholmes. This is more important. Gina. I... I can't add them and leave it. Happens. What's happened? Clearly a very grave matter indeed. Well, Miss Lestrata have made no mention of my hair whatsoever. It's... It's the boss. What do you mean? Inspector Gregson? The boss is... He's... He's dead? What? They... They just found his body! Shot with a pistol! What? But... But... Inspector Gregson? He was murdered? Oh, oh, Gregsy. Come in, my dear girl. Tell us the whole story. Oh, 
What the F? No way. Are you serious, Gina? Inspector Gregson was... He was really shot? I... I don't know much about what happened to myself yet. I'm still there, investigating the scene. But, no, then he could just be at the hospital. He doesn't have to be dead. Where did this take place? We'll rent a room in a building full of flats on Fresno Street. The outskirts of the town. Nowhere near his home. It's past investigating a case, then. Thing is, no one at the yard knows nothing about no case around there. Oh, how strange. Boss was... He was so good to me. I know I ain't so up to much yet, but... One day, I was gonna show him. I was gonna show him I'd become a proper detective. Oh, Jenny. Culprits. So, who did this? Do you have any idea who the culprit is? We got him already. Already? They caught the shooter so soon? A witness reporting something was going down and the boys got straight down there and took care of him. Who? What, what, what awful person did this? I... I can't believe it myself. Huh? It was... The Reaper? Van Zeke's? No way. Wait a minute, you don't mean... They've arrested Lord Van Zeke's for it? That's right! That Reaper bloke's gone... and shot the boss! He's, he's being set up. He's totally being set up. Strong... The strong heart told him to go and do things. Oh my gosh. Oh my... No. Lord Van Zeke's. No, 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 no. Be quite sure, Miss Lestrade. It's Barak Von Zeke's the police have arrested. I saw him with my own eyes in the interview room at the yard. I don't believe it. But there were witnesses. They're all saying it was him. So you mean there were actual multiple witnesses? They had the gunshot, apparently. And when a lot got to the scene, there was only the boss and the Reaper bloke in the room. No, someone else was in the room and Barak happened to come upon them. He's being set up. There's no way Lord Van Zeeks would have taken Grexon's life. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it either. How do they read my thoughts? Thank you for, for informing us, Mr. Strahd. It really is most terrible news. I'm dreadfully sorry. What are you saying sorry for? You didn't do nothing. Well, anyway, take a cab over to the scene right now. Please come and all, as soon as you can. You gotta help. Why don't I just go with you right now? It's a detective's lot to appear wherever some sinister plot has unfolded. Little wonder we all look haggard. Sometimes these things are almost too much for the nerves. Mr. Sholmes. What use is there in being a great detective if I fail to see something like this coming, hmm? How could I let this happen to Gregson? To Gregson? Mr. Nanhodo, I shall leave at once to begin my investigations. Of course, yes, we will too. It would be helpful if you could talk to Mr. Reaper and see what you can glean. I'm sure you were intending to do so anyway. Until later, then. Dr. Crexon dead, and Lord Van Zeke's arrested. No, no, Susie! I've called you a handsome. It's waiting outside. Thanks, Iris. Shall we, Mrs. Soto? Yes. The F is happening! Listen. And he's just sitting and chilling. There he is. Lord Van Zeke's behind bars. It's true. He really was arrested. He's sitting with his back to the wall, reading something. Don't think he's noticed us. Um, Lord Van Zeke's. Oh, 
fancy meeting you here. Am I going to have to defend him? Edgeworth, he didn't do it. Yes, this is like the Edgeworth case. He didn't do it. He was framed. The last place on Earth I'd like to be with the last person on Earth I'd like to see. Couldn't very well not come. I heard what happened. That you and Inspector Gregson was... Go home. This has nothing to do with you. But... Forgive me, Lord Van Zeeks, but I must disagree. Inspector Gregson was very helpful to us on a number of occasions. We're indebted to him. At the very least, we owe it to him to find out the truth about his death. You must help us with our investigations, please! There's really nothing I can tell you. What were you just reading at the back of the cell there? Was it something related to the case? This. The yard isn't quite so cavalier with its information as to share case details with the suspect. This is a letter from an old acquaintance. Oh, who might that be? Someone you know, as it happens. Albert Hairblain. Of course, yes. I keep forgetting they went to the same university. I would like to read my correspondence in peace. So let's get this over with, shall we? What is it you want to know? Strange. I mean, let's face it, Lord Van Zeeks never minces his words. But they seem to have less bite than usual somehow. Converse. What happens? Can you at least tell us your side of the story, Lord Van Zeeks? What happens? How much do you already know? We know that the inspector was shot dead in a small rented room on Fresno Street, and that you were found there by the police when they arrived on the scene and immediately arrested. We were told that there was nobody else in the room, and that some witnesses heard the gunshot. Then you're well informed. And there's really nothing I can add. The truth is, I don't know what happened to myself. But the gunshot! Obviously you didn't fire the gun, did you? Ugh, the is getting dry. I'm not in the habit of shooting the people I work alongside. I also heard the noise, however. Before I had a chance to investigate, I was apprehended by the arriving officer. He doesn't actually know what happened. I might ask, what were you doing in that place to begin with? I don't need to answer that. Oh. After all, you're not representing me. He's going to need a lawyer though! I think I am representing you! Your defense! Who's going to be representing you in court, Lord Van Zeeks? Because you are the defendant. Anyone other than you, I should imagine. Ah. Uh. Is there anyone willing to defend you after everything you did to crush your opponents in cases before? Would I be right in assuming that you have no representation as yet? Defense lawyers shy away from any trial involving the Reaper, as I'm sure you know. But this is different. In my career, of all the defendants I prosecuted, only 19 have ever been acquitted. Of them, 16 subsequently died in mysterious circumstances. Questions will be asked now. Surely not. I assure you, no defense lawyer will want to touch me with the end of a barge pole. We didn't actually have anything to do with those people's deaths, did you? It's been ten years now that I've been known as the Reaper of the Bailey. Believe me, nobody wants to know the true identity of this killer more than I. However... It seems that things may come to a head before I have had the chance to uncover the truth about that. What does he mean by that? Professor Hairbrain's letter. After the trial, Professor Hairbrain was supposed to go straight back to Germany, I thought. It's a letter to inform me of a safe arrival at home. I arranged his passage by sea and rail. It's a relief, I must say. It should now be beyond the reaches of the Reaper. Because the Reaper doesn't follow people abroad, you mean? Yes, so it seems. Your stooped little Nipponese friend, for example. He told me he was keeping well in Japan when I inquired the other day. Yes, that's right. He's an author now, happily working in Tokyo. The 
Professor Harebrain is safely back in Germany now. He is. So, it appears our conversation has run dry. There was a two second silence, that's all. Well, in any event, if you'll excuse me now, I wouldn't like to detain you. Yo, where's Kazuma? I was wondering, Lord Van Zeeks, if you'd like, I'd be happy to advocate for you. You trust me, do you? Yes. I've heard you speak many times in court. I've seen how you treat people. So I'm quite sure that you would never have taken another's life. It's just, my feelings can't be used as evidence in a court of law, sadly. A very gracious offer, however. He says however a lot. I trust no one. It's going to be annoying when he decides to confess for a crime he didn't commit. Oh, that's gonna be so aggravating because it's like, who are you taking the fall for? Just, you are innocent. Come on, let's get the right guy. What? Not the police, not the judiciary, and not you, Nipponi. But please. And you also had Kazuma has an apprentice, so what the heck, man? I have no intention of engaging your services. The chasm between us is just too wide and too deep, it seems. I'd appreciate it if you don't visit again. Then neither of us will waste any more time. Unless you're a bottle, you're good as beef. Perhaps we need to dig a little deeper. And find out more about Lord Van Zeeks and what happened to Inspector Gregson. But for now, we move. Fresno Street Room. I wonder how much more of this is left in this. My throat is getting tired! I am not almost done, frack, but we're gonna keep going until I reach the end of this section. This really is an out-of-the-way part of London. I doubt many people find their way down this back street. So this dust-ridden rented old room is where it happened then. A red wig! Oh, snap! So this is where poor Inspector Gregson lost his life. Yes, and the police are already hard at work investigating, it seems. We don't see Mr. Sholmes anywhere, though. Perhaps inv his investigations have taken him elsewhere. Oi, what do you think you're doing there? Every one of them drawers has got to be taken right out so you can look underneath and all. I want the space above the ceiling checked. And don't forget to look inside the chimney stack, too. Rimey, ain't you lot ever no never gone outside? Wait. Ain't you lot never gone over an house looking for a dough when the owners are out of town? Mina's obviously got some unique investigative techniques she wants everyone to adopt. Oh, so you turned up at last. Mind you, I ain't be here my long myself. Hello again, Gina. Jones has only just left. You're lucky I missed that. He went prancing around in here, pointing at stuff and flicking at that at of his and then just scoppered. Oh, he's finished investigating already, you mean? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, he didn't stop to say nothing to no one. Not even me. Gina, would you mind if we investigated too? Listen, Odo. You're a lawyer, right? Um, yes. Why? Well, you're not thinking of trying to help that Reaper bloke, are you? Oh, poor Gina. She's never going to forget, is she? That child will haunt her forever. Gina, if you don't mind me saying, if Lord Van Zeeks really is responsible for this crime, it will be duly and fairly just in court. I suppose you're right, yeah. Go on then, Odo. Get investigating. I want to know the truth about what really happened here. Thank you, Gina. I know I should converse with her probably, but who is this? Oh, it's a photograph stand. I suppose it must be a picture of one of Inspector Gregson's family members. Ah. What's the matter? Your eyes look like they're about to pop out of your head. They are. Look, Mr. Nadhodo. Quickly! 
It's Mrs. Vigil. It's Evie Vigil. Why do I feel like this woman is familiar somehow? Of course she's familiar. We met her only this morning. Ah, it's, it's, it's Mrs. Vigil. This makes no sense. Why would there be a picture of Mrs. Vigil in here? You never know if you don't go. You never shine if you don't glow. <laughs> so what's wrong with taking the back streets? To be frank, I don't think I've ever been more stumped. Sorry to say, I have no idea either. Ray photograph. Look at this photograph! Every time I that makes me love! An empty fireplace makes the room feel even colder than it would be otherwise, doesn't it? It's thick with dust, look! I think it would be fair to say it hasn't been used in a very long time. In other words, whoever lived in this room must have been extremely hardy in cold weather. Or nobody lived here at all and merely visited when the occasion arose. I wouldn't like to say which is more likely. No, that's right. It's one or the other. But we can't do anything with the drawers. Obviously, this board we gotta investigate. This looks like some sort of Nordisk board or something. And it's absolutely covered in scraps of paper. Ah! What's the Nadaho to look? This, you mean. It's an autopsy report, isn't it? And these are case notes here. And details of prison inmates. Yes, in fact, they're all the sort of documents that only a detective could normally acquire. What on earth went on in this room? Old newspaper cuttings. Huh, and this one here. Oh yes, the advert advertisement you mean, to the Red-Headed League. But why? What's that doing here? Whoever occupied this room was clearly interested in it for some reason. Okay, I thought her husband would be part of the Red-Headed League and... Ever since we came in here, I can't take my eyes off this thing. Oh, funnily enough, neither can I. It's a hairpiece, isn't it? Oops, that was Rino's game, whoops. It is, it is, a bright red hairpiece. And I suppose the fact that it's right there next to where the body was found means we have to accept that Inspector Gregson wore wigs, does it? And it's such a flame-colored red, too. Yes, that's a color we've come across very recently elsewhere, isn't it? Exactly. This is a vital clue, I'm sure of it. Red hair, uh, I will examine all evidence after I finish examining everything in a room. Gun! This is presumably the murder weapon, then. Oh my. It is real, I suppose. I think so. Guns are so rare in Japan, I really know very little about them. There's one way to know for sure, Mr. Nodhodo. Fire a shot! No! If I did that, I'd be looking for a skilled lawyer to represent me in court. Slightly safer just to ask someone who might know, I think. Gun. What is this thing? Go down, go down. There we go. Oh, what's this? It would appear to be a little model policeman. Rather charming, isn't it? In a way. Seeing as it's on the floor here, do you think it belongs to Inspector Gregson? A little hard to imagine Lord Van Zeek's playing with something like this. It's only about 8 centimeters tall. It could have fallen out of someone's pocket, I suppose. I think we should just record it as evidence, just a case. Yes, I agree. It is rather delightful, after all, in a way. Figure... Windows. Somebody's very haphazardly nailed those boards over the broken glass, haven't they? You couldn't even really call it a window anymore. Well, if you remember the window in Mr. Natsume's room, that was totally blocked up by bricks. This one does at least still let some- Ooh, uh. What did she say? This one does at least still let in some light, so you could say- You could say nothing more about it. I'm starting to feel even more sorry for Mr. Natsume now. Oh, why did he just stop her? What about this candle? The top of one of the candles in this candle holder has been completely blown off. Yes, there's wax battered on the wall behind. Look! There is? I don't see it. I suppose if a bullet had hit it. It does seem likely that the bullet hit the candle. Having first passed through the inspector's body. Ugh, now that the wax on the wall looks like blood to me. Am I blind? I don't see any wax on the wall. Huh? A candelab candelabrum. Candelabrum. Okay, before I inspect the police officers, I'm gonna inspect all the new evidence now. Hmm, okay. 
just magnifying. I thought there would be something on the back. Oh, I read that. Uh, red wig. I've always wondered what the underside of a hairpiece looks like. That doesn't surprise me at all, Mr. Nadhoro. You always want to see what lies beneath, don't you? I'm not sure that's quite how I'd put it. You must have had to use lots of bird lime to keep it in place on your head. But does it get blown off in a gust of wind, I mean? It might be a little inconvenient when you wanted to take it off again, don't you think? Is that it? No other distinguishing marks or features? Guess not. Okay. Done! I suppose this must have been the murder weapon. Oh my. It is real, I suppose. I think so. Guns are so rare and blah 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 blah. No other distinguishing marks on this gun. Police toy. The helmet of this charming policeman appears to be a little worse for wear. I'm not convinced about the charming part, but yes, you're right. The head part looks like it's been fairly heavily manhandled. Almost as if someone has enjoyed twisting it around and around for fun. Shall we try twisting it around and around too? For fun. <gasps> ah! What's that? It appears to be some sort of key. But it's tiny though. It couldn't be a key for a door. Not at that size. What is it for, I wonder? Not for the photograph, because there's no frame. This looks like some sort of key. Yes, it does. A very tiny and simple key. What's a little key doing inside a figurine of a policeman in the first place? What's it for? Any other distinguishing features? Nope. Candle. Ah, there's some black marks here, look. Yes, they look like some sort of scorch marks. But perhaps the bullet struck the candle here, do you think? It's only this one candle that's been cracked in half, it seems. Yes, I think you might be right. Firearms are rarely used by criminals in Japan, but I'm afraid I'm not particularly knowledgeable about them. What's the front? What's the back? I don't know! Okay, looks like that's the only thing to examine on this. So, I examine more. Please do. Um, excuse me. You're looking down on us from the great beyond, Inspector. Don't worry. We'll look after things at the yard. I've interrupted some deep thoughts there. Mind? Oh, I didn't examine the outline of the body. But I suppose this is where the victim. That's right, the rope is laid around the body to show exactly how it was found. Poor Inspector Gregson himself had already been taken away, and would probably be under Dr. Sight's scalpel by now if not for what happened last week. On the shape of the rope, it would appear that the inspector was curled up in a ball. So if they're saying- okay, he's curled up in a ball, but they're saying that the bullet hit the candle? But then that they would have to shoot up. So the culprit was on the ground? I don't care. Are you feeling alright, Mr. Naruhoda? You look like you've just seen a ghost. I know it's just a rope, but well, it conjures up quite a terrifying image, that's all. Especially with that blood stain next to it. Oh, I do understand. In some ways, what we picture in our minds can be even worse than reality. Susato-san is so strong, though. He's taking this far better than I am. Man, I did a lot of investigating. This dude? Um, excuse me. Oh, Inspector. Oh, sir. Poor man, he can't possibly be able to focus on investigating when he's so upset. Lamp is nothing, desk is nothing, that's not. I did the board. What are you guys? Why can't I investigate you? But I can investigate a fireplace? 
One more yawn and you get a free burger in your next order. Give me burgers! Ooh, now I I want hamburger. Mmm. Uh, let's see. Candelabrum, red hair piece, revolver, police. Um, rope outline on the floor. Uh, okay. Um. Okay. So I think I'm supposed to move. Oh wait, I didn't converse with Gina. Whoopsies, I have to converse with her first. Gina, what was Inspector Gressing doing here in the first place? That's what I want to know. What? Half a year since I got out of the clink? That's when I decided to give up me diving and become a detective instead. Oh yes, Mr. Sholmes twisted the inspector's arm to agree to take you on as an apprentice, didn't he? Someone like that, I think. Anyway, the point is, I didn't really know how much about, know much about the boss till then. But it turns out, he's a bit of a legend at the yard. Goodness, really? They say he managed to solve some really tricky craze, just like that. Good. Yep. And ever since then, he started going out on all sorts of investigations, but always on his own. He was probably in cahoots with Vigil, who was looking up shady stuff to be like, Yo, I'm gonna let you be a great detective, but you gotta do like some sneaky stuff for us. I'm always thinking of conspiracy theories. No one else at the yard even knows what after cases he's working on are, are, apparently. That's not how it's supposed to work, is it? What was the legendary inspector doing in a dingy little room like this? I know he had a lot of respect for the Reaper and all, and look where that landed him. Maybe Gregson's like, yo, I want to leave because I want to go to Paris and retire, and like whoever shot him was like, um, no, you still have to work for us. But then they got into a fight, and he got shot. That's what I think. Respect for the Reaper? In what way? I heard him say as much. I take my eye off to that fella, were his words. Not how the general public feels, is it? Most people are terrified of the Reaper. Yeah, the boss said that's exactly why he respected the bloke. I didn't realize Gregson held the Reaper in quite such a high regard. He said something else to me and all. But I didn't need to worry about the Reaper, because he only goes after people who are bad. It did kind of set my mind at ease when he said that. Right. Thanks. What is this place then? Does anyone live here? Apparently it's been being rented by some cove called Hugh Boone. Hugh Boone? Hugh Boone. I don't know. Hugh Boone. It's a sort of here today, gone tomorrow name that, isn't it? Yeah, he's what we call an unidentified person. We haven't been able to get in touch with him. See, well, judging from appearances, I'd have to say this place hasn't been lived in for a long time, if ever. Right? All the lads from the yard piled down to get stuck into the investigation. But there's so little here, no one knew what to do with themselves. I do wonder. Yes, Mr. Soto? Well, could it be that this Hugh Boone? Is in fact Inspector Gregson himself? What? How could that be? Well, if he was investigating on his own, it's quite possible that this was in fact some kind of secret office of his. I had never even considered that. Nice work, Suze. We're actually following a line of inquiry like that ourselves. Far. Look around this room, you'll see. There's a few things that hint at it. We should really investigate this place in detail. Wait a minute. That does not look like Gregson. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a picture of Gregson here. Yeah, it doesn't look like Gregson, because I was like... Yeah, and he's also 45, but Daily Vigil is... 40. Because I was like, what if Gregson is actually him, but no... Also, they look more like siblings than, um, spouses. The incident. I see that's where the poor inspector was found over there. Yeah, that's right. They said it was a single bullet what did him in. 
apparently the bullet went right through him and struck the candle tree on the wall. Oh yes, it's blown one of the candles apart completely. And the gun used there is on the floor. Is the Reaper's in it? No denying that. What? Really? How do you know that? Take it easy. I don't know what to do with myself when you stare at me with them big wide eyes. I'm only saying what I've heard. I don't know much about guns myself. There's some bigwig lawman or whatever who said so. Why don't you ask him? Bigwig lawman, is it? Anyway, Fresno Street runs along that window in there. There's some street sellers just outside who had the gone shot. Oh, but I don't recall seeing anybody outside. Yeah, they've all been taken down to the yard for questioning, that's why. Talking about the yard's legendary inspector here, after all, they'll be getting a grilling. Do you think we might be able to speak with those street sellers ourselves? I doubt it. The lads at the yard will just want to know what you're snooping for and you'll be up for grilling and all. We can't interview the witnesses, then. Shame. And I'm going. Well, prison? Said it was his gun. Nope! <laughs> uh... Ah! Yep! You've made good time. I took an express train back to London. You talking to here, Lord Strongheart? Can you? Yes, it sounds as though he's talking to someone. <gasps> Is everything in place? I had a private compartment on the train so I could check all the paperwork. It's Kazuma Sama. Ah, oh, your timing is impeccable. It is also. He said that he didn't know where Kazuma was, but he was clearly like, Yo, you made it. This guy is so sketch. No doubt you have heard the sickening news. About the Reaper's latest devilry. Also, how would you have been on the scene so fast? This guy is just so sketch. Yes. I'm sure you don't believe it for your Believe it, of course, though, Long Lord Strongheart. That Lord Van Zeeks could have done such a thing to Inspector Gregson. I believe only in the facts. And the facts in this case point to one thing. The unavoidable accusal of Lord Van Zeeks for this crime. We must bring charges against the Reaper for taking the life of our legendary detective. He wants to get rid of Van Zeeks. He wants him out of the way. You're so guilty. Oh no, surely not. Truly regrettable situation. Tomorrow the forensic science symposium finally begins. At the very least, though, we can show the world our justice system's swift and equitable processes. But does that mean the trial is tomorrow? Precisely. In fact, this is a fine opportunity for introductions. Kazuma. Ah, but of course, you already are acquainted, aren't you? Punch your face. Mr. Asuki here will be present at tomorrow's proceedings. Leading the prosecution. No! I don't want to go against Kaz Kazuma. You were supposed to be my friend. You are my friend. Wait, what? Kazuma? As I'm sure you're aware, he's a very capable practitioner of law. Kazuma-sama, the prosecutor? Wasn't he just studying to be a defense lawyer? The F! The F! Yo! Yo! Lindsay's must be onto him since that last trial? Who's Lindsay? Then... The... Then, uh, Van Zeeks? I don't know. I don't know! I'm sure you can imagine that tomorrow's trial will be closely followed all over London. In fact, no. People all over the Empire will be watching closely to see how it unfolds. There's no salvation for anyone in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper of the Bailey, and now... 
The Reaper himself must stand in the dark. Quite so. The public wants answers about the Reaper. Answers about how and why those who escaped conviction subsequently died mysterious deaths. The Lord Van Zeeks firmly denies any involvement in such matters. And there have been thorough investigations that have proven him to be innocent. That's certainly true. Or it has been, at least, until now. Ah. Auto-correcting. Ah, sorry. No, tomorrow's trial. We'll mark the start of a new chapter in our country's great judicial history. No! Prosecutor Rasuki, no! So, Kazuma will be prosecuting tomorrow? That's right. But, he's a defense lawyer, Lord Strongheart. Accomplished young law practitioners cannot pick and choose their roles. And imagine what will it mean what it will mean for the prosecution to know the strategies commonly employed by the defense. A devastating combination, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I've no doubt at all that Kazuma would be razor sharp as a prosecutor. But why Kazuma Sama? There are surely many other highly skilled prosecutors in Great Britain. Yeah, you have actually British people. It was a personal request. I asked to be assigned to the trial. You asked for this? But why? It'll all become clear tomorrow. It'll all become clear tomorrow. Guessing you tend to stand for the defense, don't you? Hazuma, don't do this to me. Don't... I mean, I'm glad I get to see you more, but... <sighs> Although the Reaper appears to be turning down all offers of representation... I'm surprised such a personal request would have been upheld. Seems unprecedented. Quite exceptional, in fact. You're quite right, Miss Mikotube. Tomorrow's trial will be unprecedented and exceptional in every way. Uh, after all, the accused is one of Britain's greatest prosecutors. The pride of the Empire. It would be unwise to give the public a reason to perceive it as judiciary closing ranks. If he's such a high-profile lawyer, like... Wouldn't you want to keep it hush-hush? I mean, I know people keep saying he's the Reaper. But I, I... <sighs> Something's just so off about this. Oh my gosh. That's why you're happy to let a foreigner handle the prosecution? You know, Ske. Let's see how your skills have been owned after practicing law in this land for so many months. Asma, I... I don't understand why you're being so hostile to me now. This isn't going to end well, my friend. Yeah, why are you being so mean to me? I thought I thought we were friends. This is breaking my heart. Yo, I hate this. So much gun. Oh yes, we noticed that there was a gun at the scene of Inspector Gregson's death. Do you know if it belongs to Lord Van Zeeks? That would be a question for the lead detective investigating the scene. Well, the thing is, she wasn't sure, so she told me I should ask somebody higher up who might know. That's right, Mr. Nadhodo. Be direct. Hello, positive attitude. That's a cute emo. I hope you are having a good night. I am having a sad night because I found out I have to go into a trial against my best friend. <laughs> it's certainly a model that's issued to all personnel involved in law enforcement, yes. Which includes prosecutors, as I'm sure you can imagine. In that case, he could actually have belonged to the victim. No, Gregson had his gun on his person. What about Lord Van Zeeks? He claims it's currently not in his possession. What? According to his story, he lost it. In short, it's more than a little suspicious. Someone could have stolen his gun? Hello? Ace Attorney do that to you. It's a very good game. Yeah, like... I'm being emotionally wrecked right now. I do not appreciate this. I'm so sad. Ugh. <sighs> but just because the gun is in question is the same type as the defendant's is no proof that it's actually his. No, of course not. Nevertheless, the situation is grave for Lord Van Zeeks. Uh, I'm going to examine Hazuma. What the heck, dude? Sorry for all the worry I've caused you, but 
you'll be all right now. Has your memory completely returned? Yes, completely. I remember everything. Including what I was coming here to do. Right. Kazuma-sama. I can't tell you how happy I am to see you alive and well like this. But... How did you come to be here in London when you were suffering from amnesia? It was the voice. This past year. I've been hearing it in my head constantly, saying the same thing over and over. Go to London. That's where your destiny waits. I'm going to need some comfort ice cream after this. Yo! I didn't brush my teeth yet? I'm definitely getting some ice cream after this. <laughs> I'm getting my favorite black raspberry chip, man. It was that voice that guided me here to London. So sorry for what's happened. Anyway, my memory might have returned to me. But there's something that won't return to the way it was before. Huh? What do you mean? I'm a prosecutor now. So I'm sure our paths will cross again very soon. It doesn't look like we're going to glean much more here. Well, thank you very much, Lord Strongheart. Remember, tomorrow's trial will go down in our Empire's history. There's much you can learn from the public gallery. I am going to destroy you and take you down, man. Sorry to have taken up so much of your time. We'll see ourselves out. Kazuma! My alarm! Ah! This is what I wake up to every morning! Ah! I love the song. I love you, Kazuma. Oh. <laughs> Before you go, do you know scared? Oh, what is it, Kazuma? I just wanted to thank you. Kazuma Sama. What? <laughs> You took my determination to heart and brought it with you over the ocean in my stead. And you carried out my role to perfection. You always were intent on studying British law in order to change our own justice system. It was your dream, and Mr. Naruhoto didn't want that to die with you. Yes, but I had another purpose for coming here. Oh? I actually have a favor to ask. Wait, but Professor Mikotoba has a favor to ask of me too. Well, you're keeping the sword. No, I didn't I give the sword back to him? I don't have a sword anymore. Which is? This trial I'll be prosecuting tomorrow. I'd like you to be there to see how it ends. Right in front of me. As the defense counsel. I don't want to. What's all this about? I know you have what it takes. But Lord Van Zeeks would never put his fate in my hands. On the contrary, he recognizes your talent. He does? It's not easy to see behind a facade sometimes. Here, have a look at this. Wait, Gregson! His brother! That's Lord Van Zeeks and Inspector Gregson! In a photograph that must have been taken some time ago by the look of it. And who's the third person? It was displayed very prominently in the detective's office. So there's no way he would have shot Gregson. In Gregson's office, you mean? Yes. What I'm trying to say is, if you really think you can trust a Reaper, you might find that some straight talking makes him take a different view. Kirby! Thank you so much for the 31 sub! 31 months sub! Lushy toast, that's a good one. Okay, two more spots for emotes. What should they be? Should it be a crying one? Take it. Rexon's photograph has been entered into the court record. I don't understand. Why are you giving me this? Let, let me examine the photograph. Okay, it's just literally that. Look at his face. Just hurry, Dinosuke. Visiting hours at the prison are almost over. What are you doing, Kazuma? What are you doing? What are you trying to get at? 
Uh, where's the prism? Prison government. Prison. Like, I don't think he wants to purposefully go against me. It's like he's trying to let me see something, but I still don't want to go against him. Sephiroth. I'm kidding. I will never make an emote of Sephiroth. Ew. Gross. Disgusting. <laughs> Lord Van Zeeks is still reading that letter. We've been gone quite some time, though. Either he's an incredibly slow reader, or it's an incredibly long letter. It might even be able to read English faster than he can. I was intending to ignore you entirely. But I can't turn a deaf ear to such an insulting Nipponese. <laughs> oh, um, sorry. I didn't think you'd hear that. I had the case notes brought to me in secret. I was reading them to pass the time. Yes, we heard that your trial is set for tomorrow. Which is none of your business. So, have you found a lawyer? How many times must I reiterate the same thing? This has nothing to do with you. In other words, no. You were just talking to Lord Strongheart, and the prosecutor for your trial has been decided. I'd expect nothing less, though I have no idea who it is. It's going to be Kazuma Asugi. Without his shirt, you sure? Uh, don't make me barf smooth. <laughs> Asugi. That made the color drain from his face. Well then. It seems I'm going to have to engage in conversation with you again after all. Asugi. Wow, there's so many talking points! Ten years ago, my older brother, who was the director of prosecutions at that time, was murdered. And the killer, as you know, was a visiting student from the Far East. Not a single day goes by when I don't curse the name Asogi. Genshin Asogi is Kazuma-sama's father. No. But what cruel twist of fate is this now, ten years later? A man's son is to crucify me in some kangaroo court. Ha ha ha! Kangaroo Kurt, that term didn't exist back then. That's from The Simpsons. Still don't understand why Lord Strongheart apprenticed Kazuma to you. To make him suffer! That's what he does. No doubt he knew of the young man's true identity from the outset. What could he have been hoping to achieve? Learning his secrets, man! And let's not forget that it was only eight days ago that Kazuma recovered from his amnesia. Why would Lord Strongheart assign this trial to somebody like that? Because he doesn't remember anything! Hmm, Asogi. That name is the very epitome of my bane. A bane that is you Nipponese. Right, your hatred of us all, Jap all is Japanese. The Nipponese bane. I'd only just been appointed as a prosecutor when it happened ten years ago. My brother Clint. The director of prosecutions was hunting down a mass murderer, so-called professor, assigned to the investigation as his partner, was a certain visiting student dispatched from Scotland Yard. That was Genshin Asogi. Exactly. I developed a deep respect for the man. He seemed noble-minded and chivalrous in the extreme to me. But none of us saw the true nature of the man. So I lost everything when it happened. My esteemed brother, the people I believed in, and any semblance of right prevailing over wrong. Oh, how awful. I don't think I ever heard the song before. To avenge my brother, I prosecuted in Asuki's trial. It wouldn't ordinarily have been allowed, but I beleaguered the ascribed prosecutor until he consented. What do you mean by the ascribed prosecutor? The man in charge of the pro Professor Case inquiry, Lord Male Strongheart. Wait, what? Lord Strongheart? He was a highly accomplished prosecutor, but he agreed to rel relinquish the trial to me and act as my advisor instead. Since that time, he's the only person to whom I felt indebted. Bad move, bro. He's using you. He's- No! He probably killed your brother! Ah! Sure he must have seen your zeal for the case and recognized your potential as a prosecutor. Anyway, time passed, but then earlier this year, who should arrive in London but you? Ah! And, of all things, as a lawyer. 
I felt your animosity the first time I ever faced you in the courtroom. Your obvious deep loathing of us Japanese. I kept telling myself it was illogical. But for so many years, that hatred had festered inside me. I could no longer control it. And I can understand why, now I know the history. But in the same way that I felt, long felt the Nipponese to be the bane of my life. To Kazuma Asogi, I am the bane of his. The Reaper who sent his father to the gallows. He's looking for revenge, and he intends to take it in court tomorrow. I don't think... He's definitely gonna take revenge. I don't think it's against um, Van Zeeks, though. Gregson's transfer to the Paris Police Prefecture had finally been arranged for the coming month. But he'll never make it to France now. Tragedy. Oh, yes. Come to think of it, he did mention something about that, didn't he? I wonder, does it happen often? Being transferred internationally, I mean. It's the first time I've ever encountered it. Oh. The Paris police welcome in an English detective is almost inconceivable. I can't imagine what kind of magic Gregson must have worked to put that arrangement in place. <laughs> It sounds like that mystery has even the Reaper perplexed. I think Gregson was trying to run away from something. It's like, hey, I want to like stop doing all this stuff, so let me leave. But it didn't happen. I'm afraid to say that we were very ignorant about Inspector Gregson's standing. We hear that he was considered something of a legend at Scotland Yard. Again, it was ten years ago that he first made a name for himself by uncovering a decisive piece of evidence that exposed the professor's identity. Or, that's why he wanted to leave. He's like, yo, someone's trying to, like, sniff into the professor case. I gotta get out of here. If it wasn't for Gregson's singular approach to the case, the discovery would never have been made. What sort of approach? After my brother's life was taken, the inspector pushed for a full autopsy. Hi, ten years ago. Why is that so surprising? Autopsy was considered a desecration of the body at the time, and rarely performed. And my brother was, of course, a noble. That made the idea of it even more unthinkable. But something Gregson had dug up in his investigations made him determined it was necessary. His powerful conviction somehow influenced the House of Lords, and as a result, I could avenge my brother's death. So, he must have had great confidence in the inspector's abilities then. And it's even more inconceivable that you would have taken his life. Don't have confidence in anyone. Oh. And I'm sure Gregson felt the same way. I've no doubt he thought of me only as the ominous reaper, just like the rest of London. That is FALSE! What really went on between Lord Van Zeeks and Gregson, I wonder? What was the true nature of their relationship? Gun! About the gun used to shoot the inspector that was found at the scene. Ah, oh, yes, that's not mine. Really? Because the common opinion seems to be that it is. What do you expect me to say to that? Lord Strongheart informs us that you claim to have misplaced your firearm. As embarrassing as that is, I'm afraid it's true. When did you lose it then? That, I don't know. Oh. I was issued with a revolver when I first became a prosecutor ten years ago. I must have stowed it somewhere, I suppose. Or left it somewhere, perhaps. Your haircut looks great. Uh, it's it's still like my old same haircut. It's just I took a shower and it's super messy now. Ugh, gross. I need to cut my bangs though. Okay, so here's what I think would happen. His gun went missing when Kazuma with amnesia was his apprentice. A strong hurt was like, yo, look for the gun. Bring it to me. This is all a setup. Poofy toast. Yes, so poofy. You have something in common with Lord Van Zeeks, after all, Mr. Nadhoro. A talent for misplacing things. No, no, no. This has nothing to do with me. Don't drag me into it. Don't make the mistake of associating me with this Nipponese. Here. Rift is very wide, isn't it? It's not decisive evidence, clearly. But it doesn't look good, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I present the picture to you. Lord Van Zeeks, we came by this old photograph. Where did you get that? 
It was taken when I became a qualified prosecutor. It's almost unbelievable. I assumed it was long lost. Um, is the man on the left there? Yes, that's my brother, Flint. There's no... Wow, that had to be updated. Cool. It had to be, really. Apparently, this picture was prominently displayed in Gregson's office. He had a deep respect for you, you know? Were you aware of that? Respect. That's nonsense. No, we've heard someone attest to it very clearly. Inspector Gina Lestrade, no less. Well, maybe once, yes. There was a time things were like that. We were brothers in arms, jovially discussing the future of justice and other such lofty subject matter. That was a nice glimpse of the past. I thank you. I feel as though I got a nice glimpse of the past then, too. There was a glimmer of light in his eyes, a brief twinkle, an insight into the true nature of this man known to all as the Stone Cold Reaper of the Bailey. Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, that's the first time he's ever used my actual name. I've lost all confidence in my country's justice system. I don't trust the police, the judiciary, or lawyers. But there's still one thing I'm willing to believe in. What's that? That's what you see in the eyes of another across the courtroom. A simple determination to know the truth. Lord Van Zeeks. From the very first time we clashed in the Bailey almost a year ago now. I couldn't deny it, even though I dearly wished I could. I fell in love with you. Here is a loath of some Nipponese, who has absolute integrity as a lawyer. There are only two other men I've known with that same look in their eyes. My brother, Clint, and Genshin also. The man he idolized and the man who betrayed his trust in the most this way. When you showed me that photograph just now, it reminded me. I mean, this photograph? Every time that makes you laugh? Back then, I was able to laugh. <laughs> I was free of the shackles of mistrust that plague me now. I looked to the future with hope. Since then, I've protected myself against betrayal by refusing to trust anyone. But at times, the mire into which I've sunk makes it almost impossible to breathe. I'm so sorry. So, Mr. Naruhodo. I want to believe in that look in your eyes. I need to believe in it. In tomorrow's trial, will you advocate for me? Of course I will! It would be an honor. You finished Somnium Nirvana? How'd you like it? Oh man, I really want to play it. That's why I gotta finish this ASAP. So please, Mr. Naruhodo. And my life is in your hands. Liked it more than first game? Do I have my issues with it? That's fair, that's fair. If you liked first game, you'll like it. I did like first game. For Lord Van Zeeks. That must have been an incredibly hard thing to ask. Which is why I simply cannot let the man down. Tomorrow, in the Old Bailey, against my old friend Kazuma. Continued. Mother flipping. Flipping dipping. Save your current progress? Yes. Ah. Uh, let's see how you draw your Chibi Uduki for your Somni, Somni and Nirvana playthrough. I was gonna draw um Chibi Miyuki. Because I don't actually know who the main character is, but I was just gonna uh, draw it as Miyuki. Save complete. Twisted Karma is last bow. Who's the Twisted Karma? I... Uh, I really think Strongheart orchestrated everything and he's ruining everything and we're gonna... F yeah! Adult music -y. Yeah, I'm gonna draw music -y. Oh, my throat hurts. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll stream again tomorrow. I kind of want to because I want to see how the trial is gonna go. I don't know how long this case is going to be, so but I want to rush through it so I can play Somnium Files. So, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll maybe see you tomorrow. Maybe not. But thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Uh, 
Wow, I don't remember what I say after streams. Thank you so much for watching. See you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. My throat hurts. I need some ice cream. Bye!